think of those words, let us turn now to say sorry for God for those times when we have forgotten that he is our saviour, that we have turned away from doing those things that will please him. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us. Forgive us our sins. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive, Forgive us our, our sin. sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sin. sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May the God who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us now pray that prayer of St. Luke's Day, that collect for the day. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician whose praise is in the gospel to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we have two reasons today, and Anne, Anne Bayes is going to read the first one for us from Isaiah. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 3 to 6. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. <laughs> he will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. For waters shall break, break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Then the, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing with joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. And now Steve is going to read our gospel reading for today from Luke. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Not to you. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. And whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. And whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, Eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. 
So as we celebrate St. Luke's Day, the Gospel reading presents us with the narrative of Jesus sending out 72 disciples to announce the good news ahead of him as he travels towards Jerusalem. I must admit, when I looked at the reading, my first thought was, great, just what do I say about sending out when we're all having to stay at home? But even as I was thinking that, it came to me, Jesus, the word made flesh, spoke to his followers in that moment in time, 2000 years ago. And since then, his words have spoken to countless generations that Jesus has called to follow him, to be guided by him as they join in God's mission in the context of the day. His message still speaks to us today and it is up to us to respond. Two weeks ago, we celebrated harvest in ways we would never have dreamt about last year, and it was good. And here we are thinking about harvest again, not this time in relationship to what we celebrate of God's creation, but in the terms of the work God has for us to do as his disciples in the fields of his kingdom. It may be right that the laborers are few, but as I see it, there is a lot of fruit out there ready to be picked. In the short, the nine short verses we hear from St. Luke's gospel today, there are many of the themes run through that gospel that are obviously very important to Luke. Family, community, hospitality, gathering together, taking care of the weak and the marginalized, and all leading to the kingdom of God being established here on earth. So who are these disciples that he sends? They don't include the 12 of his closest companions because they continue, we know, as the story progresses, to travel with him. These are people from many, from the many others that have been following him. People who have seen his miracles, listened intently to his teachings and responded with wonder. Maybe they're the ones who've asked the most questions but more likely they're just ordinary people like you and me, called as we are to today, to respond in faith. I wonder, did those followers truly grasp what they were being asked to do? We know that the 12 were still grappling with who Jesus was and what was going to happen. So how can these others know any more? But we know they trust God. They are ready to follow his command. And that is enough. Greater faith will only come by sharing what little they already know of his message. That in the person of Jesus, God was bringing a peace that would be among the most important fruits of his love. They trusted everything else they needed would be given along the way. Jesus was, after all, coming along right behind them, in person, to make everything right. Today, through his death and resurrection, we know that Jesus isn't simply following along behind us on the road, but he is here in the thick of all the challenges we are presented with. Today, Jesus walks beside us every step of our journey. In the challenges of the pandemic, he is with us. His life and teachings inspire and encourage us. He has done the hard work and we can trust that he continues to make things right. Road full of danger, but also 
because mission is not a task for individuals. It's something to do in community so that one can encourage the other when the going gets tough and the fears and the doubts take hold. Remind each other as we are reminded today by those words from Isaiah, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. In this time of coronavirus, we may feel out on our own, but Jesus has placed us in this church community. It may all look and feel very different from the way it was, but we are still on the same journey. And Jesus's message is the same. Keep going, not alone, but together. We may not share the exact same journey, but it is good to remember that by our church, in three ways, through Zoom, our home packs, our communion in church, and not least through our WhatsApp group, Jesus is sending us to encourage each other and to prayfully share our concerns for others in our wider community. The task that Jesus wants his team to undertake is enormous. And Jesus doesn't make it sound too inviting, does he? He warns them it's a big task and that they're likely to get ravaged by wolves and that they can't take anything with them to help them. I wonder what Jesus might say to us today. Taking our services on online has been a huge challenge, but think how far we have traveled. I think we've had a few reminders today with the troubles with uh, my internet not being too strong. But, you know, we haven't even had to leave our front doors to have moved on. To be honest, when our Zoom meetings go haywire and all the tech fails, I think God sees the funny side. The important thing is that we persevere, that we try again, that we keep being church. Jesus in our gospel today is imagining a new order based on the mainstay of community life, trusting, sharing, being community, welcoming and accepting everyone for who they are rather than what they can do. Each different approach allows a fresh encounter with God, which Jesus asks us to deliver and to receive as a message of peace presence of Jesus that can heal lives and calm fears. We must always be willing to discover new opportunities for doing God's work in our world. It is easy to feel inadequate when we see the task ahead. We have all had our sense of security knocked a little during these unprecedented times but there are still so many opportunities to share the gospel. At this time of crisis, we are tested by Jesus' sending out of the 72. What does it mean for us at this moment in a time, you know, at this moment in time to be sent out as Jesus asks those people to go? <coughs> they were a community sharing their sentness their sense of inadequate squeeze and their doubts, sure in the knowledge of nothing more than they had a part of being of God's new kingdom because they could share his peace. In these days, we are a community sharing both our togetherness and our apartness. We will have doubts and fears about the virus. It's natural for us to have those fears. They help to keep us safe. But we must respond to God's call, remembering that we too have our part to play in God's kingdom, because we also share of his peace. We thankfully can still witness to people by the way we lead our lives during these times. By our consideration of the common goods in our approach to the ever-changing rules, by our care of those in hunger or need, by our donations to the food bank, 
by a cheery phone call to those we know who are isolated or unwell, and by offering sympathy and comfort to friends who feel bereft. By showing genuine concern for them, bringing us to a place where we can minister to their needs. Above all, we must love people. If we don't, we risk hindering God's work here on earth in some way. We are forerunners of God's kingdom, just like the disciples we hear about today. We must pray always for the grace to be good representatives of that we proclaim. Amen. And now Becky's going to sing Open the eyes of, our, of my heart, Lord. Some of you may know it, and if you do, please feel free to join in, but otherwise, just sit and listen. Thank you, Becky. And now let us declare our faith and trust in God. We believe in God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Mary is going to lead us in our prayers today. Thank you, Mary. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, we give you thanks for St. Luke and the other Gospel writers, without whom we may never have heard of the life and miracles of Jesus, St. Paul, and all those early Christians who worked so hard to sow the seeds of faith in a difficult world. We give thanks that through them and their writing and teaching and spreading the word, we are here this morning to worship you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Lord, these are unusual times where one issue affects most of the countries of our world. We pray that all the leaders will find the way to act wisely and responsibly for the good of all. We pray for our UK national and local governments that they might find the delicate balance between the health of the people, the effect on the NHS and the health of the economy and businesses, large and small. We pray for all who work in the sectors most affected by the restrictions and ask that you be with them in their anxiety about their health, their jobs and their livelihood and be the shining light at the end of the tunnel for them. We pray for those who operate Running Me Food Bank and those who need to use it. Lord, help us to remember the needs of those less fortunate than ourselves and be generous in our giving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Lord, as we celebrate the life of St. Luke the Physician, we pray that you will look after all who work to heal others, our doctors, nurses, carers, and those who respond to help the sick and hurt in times of emergency, the ambulance drivers, the firemen, the police, and the lifeboat crews. We've reflected today on the part that memory plays in life and history, and we pray for all affected by Alzheimer's and dementia, whose memories become so sadly affected. We pray for all who feel hurt and pain as they love and support someone who can no longer remember the connections between them. And we pray that your love will help heal those wounds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we approach half term, we pray for the children and young people of this parish. Lord, give them strength to deal with the stresses and strains of the changes to their education, of cancelled activities, restrictions on how they can see their friends and family. We pray for their teachers and youth leaders, parents and families. We pray for those who are sick or in need of our prayers at this time, including Edna, Laura, Stamford, Mabel, Trevor, Bill, Anne, Les and Lucy. And we give thanks for Marilyn having received the all clear following completion of her recent cancer treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Lord, hear us as we remember those who've recently died. At the anniversary of his death, we remember Gerard Whittington. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. Father, hear us as we bring these prayers before you this morning, and rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Luke, St. Paul, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now too, let's join in with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
and bread, bread, and forgiveness as we give us our trespasses against us and lead us not oh, no. into temptation yes. but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever Amen. and now as we as we uh, are here together let us just Share in that peace that uh, Christ brings us. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Yeah. Let us offer one another a sign of peace through the screen with our usual little sign. If you're together, of course, then you can show your usual way of, of peace together. So we come to our final hymn, uh, Beauty for Brokenness. Thanks. for brokenness, hope for despair, Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer, bread for the children, justice, joy, peace, sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cures for their ills. Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor. Friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Refuge from cruel from fear cities for sanctuary freedoms to share peace to the killing fields scorched earth to green Christ for the bitterness his cross for the pain God of the poor friend of the weak give us compassion we pray, melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain, come change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravaged earth, oceans and streams. Plundered and poisoned, a future and dreams. Lord, and our madness, carelessness, greed. Make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion.
May God, who gives patience and encouragement, give us a spirit of unity to live in harmony as we follow Jesus Christ, so that with one voice we may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with all of you and all you love this day and forevermore. Amen.